Many video games aim to be as epic as they can by including loads of content, having lengthy and explosive cutscenes, or by being very long. And while those kinds of games are the most popular, for now, let's take a look at the opposite of those. The games that have simple gameplay, few characters, little to no dialogue, almost no cutscenes, and that can be completed in a few hours. These are known as minimalist games. For budget or artistic reasons, these games are stripped from the content that is commonly seen in most video games, but still manage to deliver an enjoyable and enthralling experience. So for this list, I'll be showing you some of the most memorable and creative games that do so much with so little. These are the top 7 minimalist video games. The Stanley Parable is an excellent way to begin this countdown, as the game itself even has minimal origins. Originally made as a mod of Valve's Source engine, it is now a standalone game on Steam. The game is about title our character, Stanley, whose life is one day invaded by a light-hearted yet sardonic narrator. Think of him as a male and somewhat more charming version of GLaDOS. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. The game revolves around deciding whether to obey or disobey the narrator. With only two predominant characters, a simple environment, and the only gameplay mechanic of walking, what makes the game so good are the multiple choices and multiple outcomes. You can please the narrator by following his directions or upset him by not doing so. No matter what you choose, he will always have something to say. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. And depending on the choices you made, the game will have multiple endings that will be either happy, tragic, or mind-screwing. And I can't really say much else, as this is a game that needs to be played for oneself to understand the greatness of it. All you do is choose your path and walk. Can't get more simple than that. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. A lot of games are minimalistic because they're independent productions with a small budget. But sometimes, large companies will purposely subtract design, reducing gameplay elements to create a more immersive experience, which is what minimalist games are all about. One of such big-budget minimalist games is the cult favorite Eco. You play as a young boy named Eco, surprising, right? Who is left to die in an abandoned castle. By chance, he escapes his tomb and finds a mysterious princess named Yorda. And the game consists of Eco cooperating with Yorda, solving puzzles, opening doors with her special powers, and of course, fending off the occasional shadow monster seeking to capture Yorda by beating the crap out of them with a stick. All with one simple goal: escape the castle and be free. Aside from its subtractive design and gameplay, the game has very little dialogue and almost no music, making the game world feel hauntingly desolated and all the more immersive because of it. Just two friends, alone, working together to escape the forgotten fortress. And the team behind Eco is apparently very fond of subtracting design, as evidenced by the prequel to Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, which only has a bit more content than Eco, and the upcoming The Last Guardian. I was going to make a joke about how The Last Guardian was never going to come out, but after E3 of this year, that joke has been made invalid, so instead have this video of my dog being cute. <laughs> Dear Esther, more of an interactive story than a standard game, puts you, the player, on a seemingly uninhabited island, and your purpose is to explore the island. Meanwhile, an unknown narrator reads a series of letters dedicated to a woman named, you guessed it, Esther. There are no enemies to fight and no puzzles to solve. This game is 100% story driven. The more you explore, the more of the story you hear. And the more you hear of the story, you begin to realize that things may not be what they seem. There were chemical diagrams on the mug he gave me coffee in sticky at the handle where his hands shook. It does an incredible job of getting the player immersed with its eerie atmosphere, a deserted island at dusk that is both haunting and peaceful, not to mention very pretty looking. And you all know how much I love pretty scenery. And despite its simplicity, this game still has a few secrets. For example, at certain places in the island, you can see ghosts. Ghost? <coughs> it's not a game for everyone, but if you enjoy a good and mysterious story and a hauntingly immersive atmosphere, I'd say give it a shot you will be surprised in more ways than one. A small and mysterious robed person, a vast and desolated desert, a distant summit that calls for you, and one goal, reach your destiny. In Journey, like in many minimalist games, you play as a single character, alone in a huge world with simple gameplay and no dialogue. 
but this game really shines in its presentation. The game's graphics and overall style are stunningly beautiful. It's one of those games you want to play just to look at it. So naturally, traveling across the incredible scenery, from the gorgeous desert void, to the spectacular sand surfing area, to the glimmering underground and the epic final level, all the while listening to the amazing soundtrack is an experience like no other. But that's not all there is to this game. If you're connected to the internet, a different player may join you and accompany you throughout your adventure. And because there's no voice chat, which is a perfectly okay thing by the way, it really feels like two strangers working together to fulfill the same goal and make the journey feel less lonely, while keeping the minimalistic aspects of it. Whether you travel alone or not, Journey gives you very little, but makes you experience so, so much. <laughs> Limbo is as simple and straightforward as a game can get. You play as an unnamed little boy who wakes up in a strange world and you have to venture through the world, solving puzzles and using your wit to progress. Almost no characters, absolutely no dialogue, an extremely vague story and no color even! Limbo is all about the atmosphere. The grainy black and white art style and the eerie and ethereal music make for an incredibly haunting atmosphere that really invokes the feelings of desolation, loneliness and dread. Fitting because you're alone and nearly everything is trying to kill you. While the gameplay is really standard, all you do is run, jump and interact with stuff, the puzzles you face are very elaborate and creative. Some will require extensive thinking and some will be action oriented, but all of them are unique and interesting. Unrelated to gameplay, while it's not a scary game per se, it has themes and settings that very well go into the horror category. Not to mention the horrific ways you can get killed in this game. I wish that I could turn back This is a game that must be played at night with the lights off and headphones on to get sucked into the atmosphere. Simple, short and hauntingly cool. What if I told you this next game has a great story about friendship with many unique characters that happen to be a bunch of squares and rectangles? This is Thomas Was Alone, a simple indie game that really doesn't have a whole lot going for it in terms of environments and character design. But all indie games have something that compensates for their simplicity. And in Thomas Was Alone, it is narrative and gameplay. Your adventure is being narrated by a man who sounds like the nicer brother of the narrator from the Stanley Parable. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. And as you progress through the game, little bits of backstory are being told to you in the form of quotes from other characters. I won't say what the story is, as it is best for you to play the game to find out. And speaking of characters, as you get farther into the game, you are joined by other figures, each with their own names, different personalities and special abilities. And your objective is to use the abilities of your companions to solve puzzles and find a way to advance. All the while, listening to the witty and well-written dialogue the narrator says about the other shapes. Was it too early to refer to Laura as his girlfriend? Only if I say it out loud, he told himself. Thomas Was Alone is an incredibly unique game, but also an experiment of sorts. By presenting the most simple and modest design imaginable, you can get your audience to really appreciate the story and characters, once again putting the subtracting design strategy to its full effect. And if you play your cards right when designing a minimalist game, you can give a lot of personality to a square. <laughs> Anti-Chamber. This game has no characters, no narrative, almost no textures and no standout music. This game is virtually empty and yet it's arguably one of the best indie puzzle games out there. This game integrates exploration and puzzle solving in a fantastic way. You walk around the many chambers with the goal of solving the puzzles to advance. You're only given a very vague hint of what you have to do. And that's where the lack of content becomes really effective, as you have to think outside the box and do things that no other puzzle game would even expect you to do. With no distractions, you are forced to get immersed in the space and analyze it as best as you can. And believe me, this game requires lots and lots of thinking. A lot of its puzzles are so mind-bending and intricate I can't even begin to describe them. And this is just personal, but I love the atmosphere of this game. It has a strange calming feeling to it. Just exploring the strange place, listening to nothing but the ambient sounds, it feels relaxing. I could just stay there for a while and clear my mind. Yes, just stay here, clear my mind, and relax for- Oh no! Anti-Chamber is a strange, beautiful void. 
a simple game that will test your mind like you've never had before. By creating a world devoid from nearly everything, you can forget about everything else and open your mind to the many obstacles you face, making Antichamber a successful minimalist game. This has been Media Master, and you're probably wondering why this countdown only had 7 entries instead of 10. I don't know, I guess you could say that this was a minimalist countdown, right? Get it? It's clever, isn't it? Until next time.